Uh, this is part two of uh, 4.1 notes. Uh, we left off right here. We started talking about symmetry um, and even and odd functions. So this says the graph of some function is symmetric to the y-axis if for every point that's on the graph, the point negative xy is also on the graph. All right, so that means that the y-coordinate when you plug negative x in is equal to the y-coordinate when you just plug old plain old x in. So think about this for a second. Uh, an even function that we've seen or a graph that's symmetric at the y-axis is just plain old y equals x squared. Now if I plug in um, 2, 2 squared is equal to 4. If I plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared is equal to negative 2 times negative 2 which is also 4. Okay, So I plug in an x and I get out a y. All right, I plug in this x I get out this y and I plug in the opposite of this x right here. Plug in its opposite. All right, And what do I get out? The exact same y. All right, The same y that I did the first time. Now, we don't use a specific point. Like, we don't use 2, 4, and negative 2, 4 to show this is true. We actually use x and negative x. So notice when I plug in negative x into the x squared function, I get negative x times negative x and a negative times a negative is a positive x times x is x squared so what do I get when I plug in negative x I get out the same thing as I get when I plug in positive x so I plug in x I get out y I plug in negative x I get out x squared x squared is y so when I plug in negative x, I get out y. All right, so this is actually how we're going to show it. Um, just a little bit when I start giving you the examples. We use negative x, plug it in, and show we get the same as the original function. And that's how we show that we have symmetry at the y-axis. Okay. Uh, also note that this is called an even function. If this happens, x, y, negative x, y, if that happens, you have an even function. Now, symmetry with respect to the origin, like we have down here, or what we call an odd function, think about something like y equals x cubed. And know it, it's not coincidence that this is an even power when it's an even function. And this is an odd power when it's an odd function. That's not coincidence. All right. Uh, now think of if I plug in two into this function. So two goes in for x. What happens to x? We cube it. So this is two times two times two. This is not six here. This is eight. Okay. And then if I plug in negative two into this thing, that's negative two times negative two times negative 2. Alright, negative times a negative is a positive, times one more negative is back to negative, and then 2 times 2 times 2, just like it was up here, is equal to 8. Alright, so what is this saying? This says when x goes in, y comes out, but when the opposite of x goes in, when negative x goes in, y doesn't come out, but the opposite of y comes out. Okay, so negative x goes in, negative y comes out. Before, when negative x went in, just the same y came out. But this time, the opposite of y comes out. All right, and just like before, we can show it by plugging in negative x. All right, we don't plug in a specific number. We just plug in negative x and then show, just like we did before, that we get the opposite of y instead of y itself. All right, so negative x times negative x times negative x. Once again, multiply an odd number of negatives, you get a negative, and then x times x times x is x cubed. All right. So in the first one, x went in, y came out. And in the second one, negative x went in, 
and then this is the opposite of y. y equals x cubed, this is negative x cubed, so that's the opposite of y that comes out. All right, so again, this is going to be the stuff you have to show. You have to show that it works for any x, not for specific ones. I just gave you the twos and the negative twos just to kind of give you the idea. But this is what you actually have to show to show something is even or odd. All right. Um, if a graph, oh, I'm sorry, and this meant also that uh, it's symmetric to the origin, right? The the zero zero point. If a graph is symmetric to the origin, it has this property, and it also is an odd function. Now, the last type of symmetry, we don't see it a lot. Symmetry with respect to the x-axis. All right, and notice this time, x stays the same, but y becomes its opposite. Now there's not many graphs that are like this be or, or that we discuss because they're not functions. Uh, think about it, if something has x-axis symmetry, there's the x-axis, there's the y-axis. If a graph has x-axis symmetry, that means it's flipped over the x-axis, so that means it looks something like this. Well now that thing doesn't pass the vertical line test. The vertical line hits it at two places. So these things are not functions. So we rarely discuss them because most of the time things that we discuss in algebra and calculus are functions. And, and anything that has x-axis symmetry is not a function. Okay, But um, and there are things that we see that we've seen before that are um, uh, very common geometric structures it's just they're not functions like for instance a circle All right, if I graphed a circle and we'll pretend this is a circle no laughing at it All right, if I graph a circle a circle has an equation something like x squared plus y squared equals whatever the radius of the circle is squared so let's say that this is uh, radius 4 sorry radius yeah a <coughs> circle with radius 4 meaning it hits centered at the origin hits all the points uh, that are on four units on the x and y axis <coughs> so that means that this is x squared plus y squared equals 16 because it's the radius squared all right now this graph is symmetric about the x axis because any point that's up here would also be down here all right so it's like we flip over right along the x-axis and we get that upper and lower hemisphere but this is saying look if we plug in um, x and we plug in uh, y x and the opposite of that y would be on the same graph okay so meaning that if I plug in um, any point on here let's say that that's my x if I plug in any point on here and I go up and I hit the graph here there's my y value. Well, if I go down here till I hit the graph at the same x point below, that's a negative y value. And that's also on the graph. That's what this is saying. Okay? Now, again, the way we show it, in this case, we'd put in. negative y where the y was so x squared plus negative y squared equals 16 All right negative y squared just like we saw before with the x that's negative y times negative y negative y times negative y is negative times negative is a positive. y times y is y squared. So we get x squared plus y squared equals 16. All right. And then that's the same as it was before. And since it's the same as the original, then 
this thing has x-axis symmetry. Okay. Now again, we don't see a lot of these because we mainly deal with functions. But a circle has x-axis symmetry, so that's you know a common structure that you've seen before. Um, it has y-axis symmetry too, though. You know, we could plug in negative x there and see that it has y-axis symmetry as well. Uh, also, we'll have origin symmetry. All right, now I've got some example problems to do. So I'm going to do each one of these on its own slide. So for this slide, I'm going to do part A. So I'm showing, or I'm testing to whether uh, y equals 2x squared divided by x squared plus 1, whether this graph has uh, x-axis, y-axis, or in symmetry. All right, so to test for x-axis symmetry, I plug in negative y, where the y was. All right, so there was y. I'm replacing it with negative y. Now I'm going to isolate the y again, meaning I'm going to get y by itself again and see if it looks like this anymore. So I divide by negative one or multiply by negative one. All right, over here I get back to y. Over here I get negative two x squared over x squared plus one. All right, that's not the same as original, so that means it has no x-axis symmetry. Okay, now for y-axis symmetry or origin symmetry, symmetry, I plug in negative x, so I'll be able to tell this with just a single substitution. So wherever I see x, I plug in negative x. Right, don't forget parentheses. They may they make a big difference here. Alright, and as we've seen before, when I expand this, negative x times negative x, I'm going to have that same thing. Negative times a negative is a positive. So we'll be able to get rid of those negatives. Alright, you can do that on your uh, test and, and labs. But negative times negative is a positive, so this is the same as just plain old 2x squared. This is the same as plain old just x squared. All right, and so we get right back to the original. All right, so since it's the same as the original, then this thing has y-axis symmetry. Negative x gives us the same thing as positive x. All right, so that means we have y-axis symmetry. All right, but we do not have origin symmetry. Okay, no origin symmetry because if this is origin symmetry, when I plug in this stuff, I would get the opposite of this, meaning negative, uh, the opposite of this statement. All right, now go into part B. All right, now we're going to do B. B is um, all right for part B. We've got y equals x cubed minus 3x squared. So I'm going to test first for x-axis symmetry. So again, sub in the negative y. And we've got x cubed minus 3x. Right? Negative y, if I isolate it like I did before, I mean to multiply both sides by negative 1. Do I get back to the same thing I had before? i got a negative x cubed plus 3x distributing that negative 1 through. Is this the same as it was before? Oh, this one? No. So that means again we have no x-axis symmetry. Okay, now for y-axis symmetry and origin symmetry we plug in uh, in for x. We substitute negative x in for where the x was. Alright, negative x cubed, that's negative x times negative x times negative x. And if I plug that in, I 
I got a negative times a negative times a negative, which is a negative. X times x times x is x cubed. And negative 3 times negative x is positive 3x. Alright, now, this is not equal to the was what it was before. This is actually, if I pull out that negative, we can see it better. Factor out the negative. This is the same as it was before in the parentheses. But what do we have out in front of it? We have a negative sign out in front of it. So this is the opposite. This is the opposite of what it was before. Okay? So since it's the opposite of what it was before, not the same as it was, that means we have no y-axis symmetry. But we do have origin symmetry. Okay, so there's what we get with this one. We have no x-axis symmetry, no y-axis symmetry, okay, but we do have origin symmetry. All right, and then for part C, once again we're determined if we have symmetry. So for C, x squared plus y squared. First, we're going to plug in negative y and see if we get back to what we started with. All right, negative y uh, squared is negative y times negative y. Negative times a negative is a positive. All right, and that's the same as positive y squared. So we do have x-axis symmetry here. All right, so we do have x-axis symmetry. And now, when we plug in negative x, all right, we get x squared plus y squared equals 16. All right, so we get y-axis symmetry. Now, it's kind of hidden in there, but if I plug in negative x, and negative y at the same time, I also get back to the original. All right, so this means x, y, negative x, y, x, negative y, and negative x, negative y are all on the graph. All right, and in particular, this one. So this also means we have origin symmetry. Alright, so this one had it all. Again, this was a circle, so it's going to have all of them. 